A link to the Trump administration's National Artificial Intelligence Initiative office is now a dead link on the White House's website. Agencies are far enough along, though, with AI that the Biden administration will have to deal with AI eventually. Sharon Hayes is chief technology officer at LMI. She's former associate director and deputy director for science at the Office of Science and Technology Policy at the Office of Management and Budget. Sharon, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. What do we know, if anything, about what the Biden administration wants to do or plans to do with AI, understanding they've only been in office for about a week. Right. I think I think we're really kind of reading the tea leaves here at this point in terms of what the Biden administration will do. But um, there's some there's some strong signs that point to, I think, more research and development funding um, going particularly to non-defense agencies such as National Science Foundation, National Institute of uh, Standards and Technology. Um, I expect to see more coordination among agencies. Um, I think they'll make good use of the National AI Initiative Office um, that was created at the very end of the Trump administration. Um, it's required by law, so um, I think they will carry on and, and use that very effectively. Um, I think we'll see continued emphasis on AI as a technology with real importance um, in the geopolitical arena. In other words, staying ahead of um, ch uh, China and other countries like that. And then they're going to have to focus on the policy issues. There's some really sticky issues around AI. What makes sense to keep? You mentioned that the uh, office that I referenced in the introduction is uh, is codified in law now. That has to stick around. But policy-wise or initiative-wise, what did the Trump team do that would make sense for the Biden team to continue, even if they reshape it or redirect it a little bit? Yeah, I think there's some I think there's some good examples of uh, coordination within agencies. So the Department of Defense's Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, the Jake, um, has done a really good job of ensuring coordination across the different services when the, in, within the Department of Defense. Um, you, you know, AI is only as good as the algorithms and the data that feed those algorithms. And so if your data is siloed across different parts of an agency, um, you're not going to be able to full, uh, take full advantage of, of the technology. So I think there's some good examples within agencies. And then there's a number of, of different um, policy platforms and um, institutional organizations that I think will help the Biden administration get off to a running start. You mentioned the Jake, and it was interesting to me that the Jake Jake became a center of excellence through the General Services Administration because until the Jake, I think it was the third or fourth COE, and the previous ones, one could argue, GSA went and helped the other organizations because they were in, they, they needed help. They were in some sort of trouble. Nobody believed that or believes that about the Jake. What's the significance of that, if anything, in your mind about what uh, civilian agencies might be able to do in partnership with the Jake for their AI efforts? Yeah, I think, um, in fact, I think that this um, this coordination initiative um, is, is really going to be key to that. Um, what organizations like that do is bring together agencies from across the federal government so that they can learn from each other, um, not repeat each other's mistakes, not, um, not work on top of each other and reinvent the wheel. So I think in bringing together um, those agencies under that initiative, um, they'll be able to really learn from what the Jake has done, um, but also, you know, what other agencies are doing on the research and development front and, and so forth. What's the significance that you see in agencies choosing chief artificial intelligence officers? Is that maybe a, a shiny object that people are pursuing, or is that something significant and that person will be a, a, an important contributor to what's going on in the C-suite of these organizations, like a chief data officer and others? Yeah, I, I think it can be. Um, I think that uh, you know some organizations, some agencies are are big enough that that makes sense. Other ones, um, it may make more sense to wrap all of that under the purview of the the CIO um, or, like you said, a, a, a chief data officer if if they already exist. So it's going to depend from agency to agency and the complexity of the AI issues that they're dealing with. What are the building blocks that you would like to see either individual agencies or the the government enterprise as a whole build in order to kind of do this from a holistic uh, viewpoint rather than building silos as we've seen myriad technology issues over the years, Sharon? Yeah, I think there's a number of, of tools in place actually that the Biden administration can, can really leverage to help do that. So 
um, the the chief of the um, Office of Science and Technology Policy has already been um, identified, um, and um, and that position has been raised to a cabinet level, which is a really powerful signal in terms of. Um, science and technology in general within the Biden administration. Um, but within the Office of uh, Science and Technology Policy, they have um, access to what's called the National um, Science and Technology Council, which is uh, a presidential level organization of agencies um, that can be brought together to, to solve problems. Um, add to that the President's Council Advisors on Science and Technology, which again, um, President Biden has already identified the, the leads of, of that important advisory committee, which brings um, not just government agencies together, but importantly, brings people from outside the government in so that um, they're, getting, uh, they're getting advice from the private sector and academia as well. We have about 30 seconds left, Sharon. What I'm hearing you say there is we don't need to create some kind of artificial intelligence council or some kind of new thing. We have the things in place to try to start to work on these problems. That's right. And I think the, the, the main things that they're going to need to address are continued implementation. Um, so, you know, things like the Jake will help there, but rationalize what agencies already have and what they need and their acquisition strategies. Um, focus on creating what's next, the research and development that's going to drive AI into the future through agencies like the National Science Foundation, Department of Energy, and others, and then wrangle with the policy issues. I think the time has come. There's There's been a lot of talk about uh, regulation in this sphere. Um, I think that's something that they're, they're actually going to have to grapple with and are ready to. Sharon Hayes, great insight. Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you.